clap now. <laughs> Questions? I find it interesting that covenant, covenant in terms of law, goes right into the civil rights, right into the civil rights um, part of our Constitution of Pennsylvania. We talk about rewards and judgments. Right into the language of Article 3 or Article 4. Exactly. Quote. Thanks for bringing that. I'm not as familiar as I should be with the Pennsylvania Constitution. It has to do with religion. Uh, rewards and judgment. That what was created, what was created when we had a Christian culture, a church culture, and now we're minorities, let's perceive of a minority, that if there was a Buddhist who wanted to run for judge, you could not be disqualified because he was Buddhist because of his understanding of rewards and judgments, his obligation to covenant. And it's either number three or number four, in, in a religion or freedom of religion. Okay. There were, there were, for every state except, I believe, Rhode Island, there originally were religious tests. But they, of course, went by the, by the boards as the enlightenment types, pretty much took over our institutions of higher learning, and frankly, our our, our, our pastor, but you can't, you can't get you can't get away. Rewards and punishment. What what's law? I mean, th they don't write a law. For the most part, every once in a while they do. For the most part, they never write a law without writing the penalties into the law for disobedience to that law. If you ever read, if, if, I didn't say a law, a code. That's more the right word. This is only one lawmaker, only one lawgiver. Everything else is either a perversion or an affirmation of the only lawgiver that lives and who is never up for re-election, shall we say. Other questions? Why are... Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's, uh, it's section four. No person who acknowledges the being of a God, capital G, and a future state of rewards and punishment shall, on account of his religious sentiments, be disqualified to hold any office or place of trust or profit under this contract. I, mean, I don't quite get it. He, he, Isn't that what you were talking about? Yeah. yeah, so if he does believe or if he doesn't believe it, he won't be, he'll be disqualified. Well, you, you, this is, this is a... Well, I, I mean, you're, no, you're focused on the rewards and punishments part. Right. No person who acknowledges... Okay, shall be disqualified. Right. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah, you're right. There it is. Civil rights. No declaration of rights. No, no, no doubt about it. No. Can't get away from it. It's, it's just everywhere you turn. And how was it that I, that I grew up, graduated from Bible college, and we never, we didn't talk about it. It was just, it was just off the, uh, it was off the table. Um, speaking of that, while you're thinking of other questions, very briefly, I just want to let you folks know, John Lofton, most of you were here last, last month when John Lofton spoke. He spoke about his God and Government pro, um, uh, project, and he talked about the fact that he had statements to be read if, you, if we wanted to do it in front of our county board or local township board or whatever. I want to let you know I was able to do that last Tuesday, a week from tonight, and uh, I stood in front of my Brecknock Township board and um, three supervisors and a solicitor and a few folks in the, um, you know, out, out there listening. And I read a um, statement that talked about the fact that the original law of these colonies was definitely based on the Old and New Testaments. And there is no such thing as a right created by any human institution. That our own declaration points out that in order to protect the rights that God gives, governments are instituted among men to protect, not create. And um, it felt kind of good about the whole thing. It just kind of felt kind of good about it. Uh, I'm not sure how it was taken. I think some people took it very well. Other people did not. Um, looking forward to uh, reading many more statements of that nature. Um, I... I and we'll let you know, you can talk to me about it later, about the experience afterwards, a uh, reporterette from uh, Lancaster Newspapers wanted to talk to me a little bit, so I 
began to talk to her, and I, I could tell the whole concept was completely new. That the, that, that, that the Constitution doesn't give you any rights whatsoever. No. I, I, I mean, I, that, was, that was really news with her, and I'm sure everyone else. But I am looking forward to going back, and I want you folks at the Mid-Lank Reformation Society to know that if, um, I've written a blog about it too, which I think will be published tomorrow or the next day. Um, I want you to know that if you would like to, to do this, um, I would, you know, I or someone else from Mars would certainly love to support you. Uh, perhaps even um, go to the meeting with you, or if you um, if your township would allow it, maybe we could leave a statement if you weren't if you didn't want to do it. Um, it was a uh, it was good. I hope more can do it, and I'll have updates because I plan to be out there next month as well, and uh, we'll see if they uh, we'll see how things go. Hopefully, we'll be able to. Establish some relationship with some folks and be able to talk to them about what the Bible has to say about covenant keeping with the Creator. Okay, there's more that could be said about that. If you have questions, I'll be around. Any other questions about what we said tonight? Now that I've distracted you, I probably made you forget the question you had. Who has the next question? <laughs> just yes. It's not, it's not really a question, but I've, I've never thought about the fact that other religions fit into the covenantal nature of reality. But it's true. It, it makes sense. But can you give us some other examples? You gave the environmental one. Can you pick a couple other, or another example and just flesh it out a little more just to help me be able to think through this better and apply it better? Um, let's take the um, let, let's take what the early missionaries ran into. Um, in I didn't even talk about this book. Let me just do that too. Uh, another book that I just loved was a book by um, I'll get to that in a minute by um, Otto Scott called The Great Christian Revolution. Otto Scott points out at the beginning of that book, it's a book on, on, on how, how Christianity has changed the world. Um, not, to, not to mix it up with this book that I haven't talked about in a minute. Um, yes, I will, indeed. Talks about the fact that, Lord, um, that wherever the early Christian missionaries went, and it's not well known, but you know, we have, what happened to the 12 disciples? Well, the 12 disciples scattered, and they went out of Jerusalem, and they faced the pagans wherever they went. And do you know what they faced every single time that they went to a, a godless culture? Do you know what, what some of you know what it, what it was? A particular practice. Want to guess? This, human sacrifice. It was human sacrifice. Every time. Not most of the times. Every time. Covenant. In other words, the entire world believed in covenant. We must kill this person. If we're going to be rewarded by the gods, we have to do it. And it's not like they rolled out of bed and said, well, you know, this kind of stinks. We've got to kill people, but you know, yeah, that's what we believe. It's like, no, let's get out there and do the right thing. I'll, I'll take another religion, the communist religion. Definite covenant there. No doubt about it. You must, you must get out and you must take away the money from the capitalist pigs, even at the cost of your own life, in order for the rewards to come back to you. And if you don't do that, you will continue to be oppressed by the landowners. Nazism the same way. Get out there and, and take and get rid of the of those of those people that are holding back the races. I mean, of, of all I know I've mentioned this before here, but we've got to get rid of these these uh, these pictures, these character characters of Hitler as a slobbering idiot. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very bright guy, and he applied Darwinism very consistently. And he said, "Look, there are people with blonde hair and blue eyes. Clearly, they're the farthest away from the monkeys in the jungle that have dark hair and dark eyes. This is simple stuff." So we got to get rid of the people that are closest to the animals 
in order for the people with the red hair, the blonde hair, the blue eyes to thrive. We can't keep on mixing ourselves with them. We're holding back the race. So let's go out and do the right thing on behalf of the race. And it was Christians who stood up against them. It wasn't the atheist crowd at the time. They were in his pocket. What a horrible thing. Yes? Along the lines, that, another comment along those lines, when we developed that talk for the Patriots, what we ended up with was... We, we who's right, who's wrong, says who. Says who. And what's right, what's wrong, says who. Sorry. Yeah, what's right, what's wrong, says who. And the alternative is might makes right. That's if it. we don't, If we don't abide by God's law, what we, what we are left with is that the guy with the biggest stick is the one who's going to be in charge. Covenants are imposed. God imposes his covenant on us whether we like it or not. The guy with the big stick does the same thing. And what, what you end up with in any covenant is these are the rules, and if you don't obey the rules, you're going to get hit with the big stick. There is going to be death. It, it's just the way things work. Who's got the biggest stick? Well, God has the biggest stick of all. But there are lesser pretenders, and they will, they will use the stick. Absolutely. Um, another one. Let's take uh, 55 million dead babies. <laughs> that started out very covenantally. Margaret Sanger making, making the intellectual case that we will destroy the race if we let idiots, this is what she said, and imbeciles, her words, continue to breed. Let's do the right thing. Let's reward future generations. Let's start killing off those lesser breeded people. Covenant can't get away. It's just everywhere. Thank you for your kind attention here tonight. Okay, don't